Ashley out here from the American Digital Network studio where we continue our preseason football coverage by taking a closer look at the Naval Academy. Navy's first year in the American Athletic Conference, actually its first year in any conference, couldn't have gone much better as Ken Niamatololo's team set a program record with 11 wins, won a share of the American's West Division title, reclaimed the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, hammered Pittsburgh in the Military Bowl, and saw quarterback Keenan Reynolds finish fifth in the Heisman Trophy voting. Navy finished the 2015 season ranked number 18, leaving fans in Annapolis wondering what coach Ken Niamatololo can do for an encore. A big part of Navy's success last season came from the mid's experience on offense, but with 10 senior starters lost to graduation, Navy will hope to have some new faces execute the trademark triple option as seamlessly as it did last season. Senior Tago Smith takes over at quarterback, and though he enters the season as the projected starter for the first time, Smith has gained plenty of experience behind Reynolds the past three years. Navy averaged more than 320 rushing yards per game last season, but when the mids do throw the ball, they have a legitimate threat with Jameer Tillman, who averaged 20 yards per catch in 2015. Despite the significant turnover on offense, don't be surprised to see Navy right in the thick of the West Division race and in the hunt for a 13th bowl appearance in 14 years. And to give us the inside scoop on where the mids are at, just now over a week away from the first game of the 2016 season, we'll be joined on Skype by Bill Wagner from the Annapolis Capitol. Thanks for tuning in with us here on the ADN. We're talking Navy football today and are joined on Skype by Bill Wagner from the Annapolis Capitol. Great to have you on the show with us again. Let's start off by talking about Navy's first season playing in a conference. Things went pretty well for them last year. Fell just short of playing in the championship game. Now heading into year two, facing a lot of the same teams again. Does that position them any differently now that they have some familiarity? Well, I think Navy definitely thinks that they're a contender in the West Division. Uh, they understand that Houston is the favorite, has a lot of good players back. Obviously, uh, Memphis is probably going to be right there. But uh, I think Navy proved last season that it can play in this league. It can compete at a high level. Uh, they're going to be you know, running the same offense, same defense. Uh, they've built a solid program at Navy, and I definitely feel that they are a West Division contender. Whether they're going to win the championship or be runner-up like last year or finish third, who's to say? But I think they'll be right there at the end. It's no secret that a lot of last season's success had to do with former quarterback Keenan Reynolds, but we saw a glimpse of Tago Smith last season, and he's gotten to develop and learn against one of Navy's all-time greats. Is he ready to lead the team and run the offense? Oh, absolutely. Tago is a veteran. He has played quite a bit of football for them. As a sophomore, he started two games and acquitted himself very well. Uh, been watching him in preseason practice. He looks very confident running the offense. Um, he is ready to take charge, and I think he... He has a lot to prove. He knows that everybody is wondering what will happen after Keenan Reynolds. And uh, so he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder to show that he's a good quarterback as well. Now, Navy's defense held 10 opponents to 21 points or fewer last season. Quite a few starters back from that group. Has this unit continued to improve and develop since last season? Because if so, they're going to be pretty tough to go up against. Well, they do have a couple question marks on defense. They return a lot of their linebackers, which is good because in Navy's 3-4 alignment, the linebackers tend to make the bulk of tackles. However, they did lose key, two key cogs up front. William Anthony, defensive end, and Bernie Syrah, the nose guard, were really two of the best defensive linemen Navy's ever had during the triple option era. Uh, Will Anthony was the kind of guy that got upfield, caused disruption, got into the backfield. Uh, Bernie Syrah was a guy that would, could take on two double teams and hold the point of attack. He was a real stout presence up front. So... They've got Patrick Forrestall is slated to start at nose guard, and it appears they're going to move sophomore Jarvis Polu into that left end spot. But there are some question marks on the defensive line. And then in the secondary, they've only had one returning starter, Daquan Thomason. And uh, Daquan wasn't even a starter 
uh, at the beginning of last year, he ended up moving into the starting lineup due to injury. So there are some new pieces on the front end, back ends of the Navy defense that uh, until they play some games, they will be question marks. The list of accomplishments is pretty long from last fall, and I'm sure the goal is nothing less this year. One, does this team have a chip on their shoulder after being left out of the championship game? And two, what would you say is the key to that working out differently for them this time around? Well, I, what I think they have a chip on their shoulder is that a lot of the uh, national pundits, uh, they finished in the, the season ranked 17th in both polls last year. And many of the national polls have Navy down around 46, 50. Uh, so I, I know Ken Niamatololo has kind of taken uh, a bit of a, um, you know, a front to that. It, he, he can't believe that Navy has fallen so far in, in the nation's eyes uh, just because of some graduation. I think what I tell people a lot of times is Navy has built a program. They've been running the same offense, and the same defense now for 12 years, and they have recruited to those systems, and they have to, they have proven over time that they can reload. Graduation losses happen every year. You know, you don't always lose a player as great as Keenan Reynolds, but they do uh, have shown that they can reload and, you know, plug and play, as they say. And uh, I think, uh, yes, Navy has something to prove in terms of just people thinking that they're, they're going to fall off dramatically when they've shown that year in, year out, that they're competitive, they, they post winning records, and they go to bowl games. All right, Bill. Well, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us today. Navy kicks off in just over a week, so we look forward to having you again uh, on the show again this season. Thanks, Haley. All right, well, here's a look at the Mids' opening schedule for the 2016 season. They will be home for weeks one and two as they take on Fordham and have an early conference game against UConn. Then they will continue league play on the road at Tulane before heading to Colorado to take on Air Force. The first four weeks of the season should get them geared up for a rematch against the co-West Division champs, Houston. Thanks for tuning in with us here at the ADN. I'm Haley Outen.